changes the atmosphere. His name is Jesus. That's the one we believe in. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us might be in a place today where we feel like, I don't know, sis, I just feel like I'm in a dry place, or I don't know, I don't know about the power of Jesus, I don't, I don't know who he is, I don't know what he does, but we've come to tell you today that Jesus came, he dies, and he rose with power. Amen. Who believes Jesus rose with power? And that same power is the power that brings us back to life. It pulls us out of dry places and it um, covers us. He's refreshing us today. So I just want to take some time really quick. I know we want to go into worship, but if you feel like you're in a dry place, just re lift your hand and say, Jesus, refresh me. Fill me up, God. Refresh me. Jesus says in his word, come to me all who are weak and weary, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, come, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Maybe we've been holding on to things from the weak, but the Lord is saying, I'm coming to refresh you today. We're getting ready to sing a song about the river, but if you don't understand what the river does for you, you're not going to be able to worship with us. The river of God is designed for you. It's a representation that God is flowing through us. And it says his spirit is the one that makes us alive. I'm going to read a scripture really quick so we can go in. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being, out of his heart, out of his belly, will flow rivers of living water. So if you feel like you're not alive today, this is your time to jump in the river and allow the Lord to refresh you, to shake off what was going on this week, shake off those things in the government that might be vexing you and worrying you, shake off those grades, that quiz you didn't do that great on, shake off that one coworker that kind of got on your nerves, but say, God, I want to be refreshed today. I want to be in your river today. If that's you, just lift your hand and say, I want to be refreshed today. God, I want your glory. I want to be refreshed in your river. Hallelujah. There is a river and goodness flows out of it. We won't have sorrows. We won't have fear, but we're walking in the joy of the river today. Can y'all clap your hands? Hallelujah. Y'all got to bop with me because we're dancing the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Catch this. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain and it drowns all roads. There is an ocean and it's deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. Say there's a current. There is a current. It's flowing deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. It's crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. I feel it bursting, bursting, bursting up on the ground. We feel it now. It's bursting, bursting, bursting up from the ground.
because we know that he's refreshing us, he's restoring us, he's giving us new life as we enter into his presence and worship today, amen? Now we need y'all to declare this next part with us, okay? Break open prison doors, set all the captives free, spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me, nothing can stop. But we're all the way in. Not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. Not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. We're going all the way in. We're going all the way. Not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. We're saying, God, I want to be fully immersed in your peace. I want to be fully submerged in your joy. Because in your presence, God, we're made whole. And everything that was broken, crooked, not right, when we get in the presence of God, we get to fully experience him. Amen. In the river, there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. The one that gives you all those things, his name is Jesus. And we've given you a preview to that by calling on his name. But we're about to go into talking about who God is. We're going to say that he's a healer. He's a provider. He's a protector. He's a deliverer. He'll make a way out of no way when you can't see the way out. God will step into your situation because he's a relational God. He wants a relationship with you. Jesus literally loves us so much. He came. God sent him to earth for you. He lived a perfect life for you. He died, but the story didn't end there. He rose with power. And that's the God that we're worshiping today. That's the God that we're asking to come into our hearts today. That's the God that we're asking to come into our situation today. So right where you are, can you just begin to say, Jesus, I need you in my situation. Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, I need you in my heart. I believe who you are. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We call the name of Jesus. He is our healer. We call the name of Jesus. He is our provider. I call the 
the name of Jesus. He is our protector. I call the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. I know he's a provider. provider. I will speak the name of Jesus. I know he's a protector. protector. I will call the name of Jesus. He's a deliverer. Yes, he is.
dare you to speak the name of Jesus over your situation. The next time that you come in contact with something that just ruffles your feathers in the spirit, I dare you to call on the name of Jesus and watch things start to shift in your life. You might not see it, but you can trust that when you call on the name of Jesus, something's working. He's working for you because that name has power. That name has authority. And that is the only name that can turn situations around. The only name that can deliver you, that can snatch you out of darkness and literally walk you into his marvelous light. Just call his name, Jesus, Jesus. You know what's going on in your own life, so I want you to call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, 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 hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, we love to call the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is bringing his peace today, oh God. He's bringing comfort to the brokenhearted. His name is Jesus. 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 He's bringing healing. Jesus. 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 He's bringing breakthrough. His name is Jesus. church as well. At this time, I'd like to announce our senior leadership, Apostle Charlie and Prophet Vicky, and Pastor Ray and, and Danette Miller. Let's all stand and show them some love. At this time, I just want to acknowledge any first-time visitors. We're not gonna ask you to say anything, just stand so we can show, show, show you some love. There's no first time visitors this morning. Amen. And in that church as well, if we have any visitors, if we have any visitors or in that church as well, feel free to hit the get connected link. And big shout out to our internet moderator, Jeremiah Emmons. I encourage everyone on internet church to stay encouraged and make sure you chat in the chat room. Use your e-praises and e-praises. 
claps on the chat. Let's all congratulate Mr. Eric and Mrs. Willis Scott on their marriage yesterday. At this time, direct everyone's attention to the monitors for the RCC News. Good morning, RCC. We want to welcome you to Restoration Christian Church. We have multiple ministry events throughout the year and opportunities for you to join into what God is doing in our ministry and our community. On behalf of our general overseers, Apostle Charlie and Prophet Vicki Ammons, and the leadership of our campus pastors, Ray and Danette Miller. Here's some information on ways you can stay connected. Don't miss the Hour of Power this Wednesday at 7 p.m. with our very own Elder Tim Matthews. Stream live through our internet church or at rccva.church or even by using the RCC app. It's a family affair, and you do not want to miss out on the fun, games, activities, and various sessions planned for you and your entire family. Prophet Vicki will kick off a phenomenal parent workshop for mothers on Friday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m with complimentary child care for children ages three through 12 years old. Then Saturday, Pastors Bray and Danette will host a day full of workshops with various facilitators, including a men's empowerment session hosted by Apostle Charlie. And don't forget about the family cookout. And you certainly don't wanna miss Sundays Youth Explosion, the Young, Saved, and Gifted Edition at 9.30 a.m. Come expecting a blessing as Jeremiah Devalier shares a word of encouragement. And remember to wear your inspirational t-shirt and jeans and be sure to visit our on-site youth entrepreneur vendors. RSVP for Friday and Saturday sessions and the cookout at rccva.church by clicking the RSVP link under the events tab. The WOW Boutique will be open to the public on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Dream Center. The boutique will feature women, men's, and youth apparel, shoes, accessories, plus household items and decor. Proceeds will benefit WOW Ministries International, along with the Vachel S. Slade Scholarship awarded annually to a worshiper and aspiring musician in the body of Christ. Our Watchman Night of Intercessory Prayer will be held on Friday, August 4th at 7 p.m. Join us on site or stream live through our internet church as we seek the heart of God through prayer, prophetic worship, repentance, and purification. Minister James Davidson is inviting all brothers ages 16 and up to join him at Top Golf on Sunday, August 6th at 5.30 p.m. Come join for an evening of golfing, food and fun. The cost is $45 per person and you can RSVP by Wednesday, August 2nd at rccva.church by clicking the RSVP link under events. Connect with us today on site for live corporate worship or via our interactive and engaging internet church. So no matter how you're connected to us, we believe that restoration is now. At this time, may I have Apostle Charlie and Prophet Vicky up for baby dedication? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another. 
another hand clap of praise for this serious yet joyous occasion. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this time, we are going to ask ministers DeRyan and Tara Brister, the parents of Chloe, JL, and Ryan Dawson Brister, to come forth at this time right in the center. And we're also going to ask as they're coming any grandparents, godparents, or immediate family that is here, if you would come and stand around them, behind them. Amen. Stand around them and behind them. Hello, Chloe. I had to press my way to be here to see our beautiful spiritual granddaughter and grandson. Amen. Hallelujah. Dedicated back unto the Lord on today. And so as the family is coming forth um, behind them and around them, we all know that's symbolic of the physical and the spiritual support that will surround you, Minister DeRyan De De and Tiara, and your children. Amen. Both parent and child as you all grow in the Lord. Somebody say together together. How many of you know children can teach you something? So we're not going to just make it like the parents doing all the teaching. Am I right about it? They will teach you and they will correct you. Am I right about it? Well, mama, you told me not to do that. Somebody say amen. amen. So today's dedication is symbolic of your vow. Minister DeRyan and Minister Tiara, your vow on today as the family is coming and surrounding. Come on, Allison is in the house. Somebody say, it takes a village. It takes a village. Darian and Tiara, when y'all feel like crying, just look around, you call Allison. Say, girl, I need to laugh hard today. Cause these chilling here, Lord help me, amen. Thank God, I was our 25 and 27. Just call us if you need any guidance, amen, wisdom. And so you have it in front of you, you have it behind you, you have it all around you. You shouldn't have to suffer, amen, during this awesome, awesome season. So the dedication is certainly symbolic of your vow to return the beautiful blessing that God has given you back to him for his purpose and his glory, amen. Tierra and Darian and family, we find it in Psalms 127, verse 3 through 5. It says, Lo, children are inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. We oftentimes look at the expenses that go with the child and not the reward. We miss how much it cost us instead of the blessing of what they bring to us. This verse reminds us that the children are the fruit of the womb, and it is God's reward. It says, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. Happy is the man. Darian, are you happy? <laughs> I was smile, smile, smile. <laughs> happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Yes. Darian Joshua, one of the generals in the body of Christ, he made a declaration not just for his life, but he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This dedication is an introduction to your children into the service of the Lord. Even as a young age, Solomon, teacher and instructor of wisdom, he alluded to the fact that a wise father will lead his house spiritually. There are many dads, but there are not many that lead their children. Yes. They leave that duty to the wife. They leave it to the mothers. But we commend you and celebrate yes. you Hallelujah. as a father that's taking the Hallelujah. headship role of bringing your family back to the Lord. Hallelujah. This is very significant in this dedication. Yes, sir. We find it written in the New Testament that parents brought their children to the Lord Jesus and he laid his hands on them and he blessed them. Today we've set aside this time to dedicate these babies back unto the Lord. 
We understand what counsel. We don't baptize the babies. We often say that because they don't understand what's taking place at this moment. So we dedicate them with the joy of Proverbs, understanding that if we train them up in the way that they should go, yes, when they're old, they won't depart, yes, but Lord. they'll make a personal declaration one day that he's not only your Lord and Savior, but now he's my Lord yes. and Savior. Hallelujah. That you will lead them in a way that they will come to the knowledge and understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and the perfect sacrifice that he made for their life and they too will make a personal dedication to say we were dedicated but now we want to give our life and be baptized and we too want to be saved. Amen. Amen. And so we pray for them and we dedicate them back to the Lord and we look at the scriptures and it says Jesus again he, he put his hands on them and he prayed for them and he rebuked his dis disciples because they didn't understand the significance of the moment why do we got to take time out the service to, to talk to babies and put hands on babies Jesus says no 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 you don't understand what's taking place and so he rebuked his disciples for, for not wanting the children to come and he says bring the children yes. unto me yes. for of such is the kingdom yes. of heaven yes. you understand and so what you're doing today is a heavenly responsibility to this congregation. The family is a divine institution ordained by God. It's under attack, the mountain of family. Yes, sir is under attack. The mountain of family is trying to be hijacked by religious institutions and religious laws, but we understand that God created the family, and there's no man or no devil, a man that can change what God has instituted and put in place. Yeah. And so God understood the family from the beginning, and he understood the role of children, and he has caused you, these mothers and fathers, not to be afraid to say, God, we trust you. Yes, we trust you with the most valuable thing you've given us. Not the house, not the car, not the bank account, but yes, we trust sir. you with our living, breathing son and daughter. And God, give us the wisdom and the understanding to raise them. And God, we thank you for the resources that they will walk upright and be fully sustained. And even as Hannah dedicated Samuel back to you, now, we dedicate our son and daughter back to you, Lord, yes, Lord. publicly declaring that these children belong to God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. We know Hallelujah. that the anointing flows from the head down. We also know that generational blessings, the man of legacy, are passed down throughout generations. So you're born and unborn, children and grandchildren are blessed because of you. Amen. So we ask that you would take a moment at this time to rededicate and recommit your lives to Christ. Amen. Asking forgiveness of any sin by word, thought, or deed, known or unknown. We're going to clear the slate. So nothing but the generational blessings, nothing but the generational blessings will flow from the Bristol household nothing will hinder delay or deny the blessings of the Lord from coming to your home so we ask that you would ask the Lord to come into your heart and that the Spirit of God will not only rest upon you that the peace of God and the divine hand of protection will not just rest upon you today but they will also rest upon your children understanding that whatever spirit is upon you it is that spirit that will also be upon your children while they're under your care. Amen? So as you have rededicated your lives to Christ, you are now ready. Somebody say, they ready now. They're ready. To dedicate your child back unto the Lord. So I ask, and if you would answer, do you, Minister Darian and Minister Tierra, vow to demonstrate and teach these children how to love, honor, and respect, first God, then themselves, and then all of mankind, and to only hate and resist that which is evil? Do you vow to demonstrate and teach these children the power of prayer by applying their faith in the name and the blood of Jesus? Tiara? Okay. <laughs> she Let's caught make up. sure, all right? She caught up in the heavenlies. 
Earth to Tierra, right? <laughs> Do you both vow to keep these children active in children's ministry and youth ministry that will teach them the word of truth along with um, them under your care and your covering? Do you vow to fight for these children and engage in spiritual warfare on their behalf? Knowing that the fight is not against flesh and blood, I always say, you love the children. You hate and despise the enemy that has the audacity to cross the line and frustrate your children. Amen? Knowing that the fight is not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits that would try to come up against them and their anointing, yes? Yeah. Amen. Based upon your vows and based upon your affirmation, we now pronounce a priestly blessing over your house. If you would just bow your head and close your eyes and lift your hands to God. If those in the congregation would stretch your right hand, symbolic of strength, upon this family. Heavenly Father, we speak a blessing over the Bristol household. Yes, Lord Jesus. We declare that every word curse, yes, Jesus. every generational curse, every attack on family yes, Jesus. is broken even now. even now. And this is the generation of the renewing of the covenant. Yes. And this is the generation of the restoration of the name. Yes, and this is the generation that will lift up the standards, God, that yes. there would be no evil spirit that would walk amongst this family, but God, their authority shall rise up in them. Yes, For God, we declare according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, you knew them before you formed them in the belly, and you called them and you sanctified them before they were drawn from the womb and you ordained them to be prophets and apostles to the nation yes. and God you have lifted up a standard over their life and God now bless them and keep them and make your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them yes. and Lord lift up your countenance over them be. and give them peace all the days of their life that no unrest would fall upon them but God they would be a standard bearer yes. in the house of God a standard bearer in the kingdom of God, yes. in their names shall be great. Yes, Jesus. And they will forever honor you. Forever. In Jesus' in name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' in name. Jesus name. RCC, if you agree with this blessing, stand to your feet. Lift your hands towards this family. Yes. And we charge you as a congregation that you have a role as witnesses and a role as a community and a body of believers to be a part of the village in raising this child. RCC, if you would take that responsibility and agree to do your work in yes, speaking Jesus. encouragement, speaking life, Ooh, speaking yes, hope, Jesus. speaking destiny, yes, speaking Jesus. prophetic future yes, into this Jesus. family and these children, say, I do. I do. With your declaration I and with do. this family's declaration, we pronounce Announce the blessing of God yes, over your Jesus. house, not only now, but henceforth and forevermore in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 As, as Pastor Ray and Danette come, are the only other siblings, Micaiah, Michaela, Michaela, Michaela? Okay, step up with your dad. If they would anoint the entire immediate family, Minister DeRyan, Chloe, Minister Tierra, Ryan, and Michaela with the oil at this time. We understand that this oil is a symbol of Holy Spirit under whose protection, peace, and guidance we are sealing you on this day. We apply the faith in the blood of Jesus to a whole nother level. But when the enemy sees the blood, that has been applied to your doorpost. The enemy, the avenger, shall pass over you. You shall not encounter the illnesses, the sicknesses, the frustrations, the anxieties, the 
the worry, the stress that many families experience because you have faith in the blood of Jesus and his name. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord over your life and Lord over your family. So today we seal the faith that you have released to dedicate your babies back to the Lord today with the blood and the name of Jesus. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. Ryan, Tierra, just know this, that what's difficult for others, Holy Spirit said it will be of no challenge for you because you have a posture of prayer, worship, and warfare that's active. I said active in the church and at home. So you leave this place expecting signs, wonders, and miracles to manifest as a result of your faith. Never walk with your head down. I don't care what the situation or circumstance may be, it's God's way of bringing you back down to your knees to keep you humble. Mm -hmm, to keep you humble. So today RCC celebrates you and your family. Let's give God a final praise. We celebrate you. Tiara, we see you, woman. We see you. And the prophetic vessel that you are, you can speak a thing. It don't even have to be out loud, but when you think a thing and ponder a thing in your heart, God said, that thing I shall manifest for you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Family, thank you all so much for being there for them. Amen. You may be seated. May we now have King to complete you as our worship leader. to prosper and offer. Okay, so we got five ways to give. If you're in church, four ways to give. If you're out of the church, f f uh, one way is the box over there in the, in the corners. Maybe some drop boxes. Um, website, rccva.church. Um, you could text them out code to 84321 and you could call 757-8200717 for the mail drop off and if you need an envelope raise your hand the usher will give you an envelope and I would like to say a scripture over the offering 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 that we are, we are people who will not get just. We are not people who will not just give bountifully, but will also reap bountifully in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And this time, the sounds of Judah will be coming up. Good job, King. Good morning, RCC. Good morning. You know, I was thinking this week, how do a person sing about the goodness of God and a person feel like they're drowning in disappointment? But when I look back over my life and I think things over, y'all remember saying to say that? God has been so good and I have nothing to complain about. So I forfeit the choice to nourish negative feelings. I give up the right to complain, to murmur. Amen? So this morning, we're going to continue to be refreshed and sing about the goodness of God. Together, we're going to worship, okay? 
and then we're going to go into the word. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will say of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice You have led me through the fire in darkest night, you are close like no, no other. other. I know you as a father. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. I know you as a friend. And I have a fear in the goodness of God. Come on, can we lift that up all over the room? All my life, you have been free. Yes, you have. All oh, my life you have been so, so, so good. With every breath that I am made for, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Can we just sing that one more time? All of my life, all my life. Yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. Lord, you've been good to me with every breath that I am made. Oh, I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running now. It's running. is running after, it's running after me, see your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, surely your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, with my life laid down, with my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything, I'm withholding nothing, your It's running after, it's running now to me, it's running now, it's running now, it's running now, it's running now to me, it's running now, it's running now, it's running now, it's running now to me, it's running now, running now to me, yes it is. He will restore my soul. 
Running after me, said it's running after me. His grace and mercy, said it's running after me. It's taking over ya. It's running after me, running after me, running after me. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you know that all your life that God has been faithful. Even when you turned and ran away from him, his grace and mercy came running after you. So you, he loves you that much that when you turn and run, he comes chasing after you. A mighty God, a big God that can do anything. But yet and still, he comes running after you. You, you, you got to reflect in your mind, just for a moment, how you turned away. Some of us have given up, given up on life, given up on marriages, given up on family, given up on jobs, given up on all types of things. But yet and still, he comes running after us. The Bible talks about what a shepherd does when he has, well, it don't say 100 sheep, but he says it left the 99 to go get one. So he had 100 sheep, had everything over here, but if one got lost, if one was taken, if one was pulled away, so he leaves the 99 to go get that one. You could have been that one, one day. At least I was that one, one day. At least one time in my life. Well, more, several times in my life. But yet it's still, oh Jesus. He came running, Roger. He came after me. I should have had y'all do that at earlier because that just messing with me. Maybe some of you have never messed up in life since you've been saved. Maybe some of you ain't never had no problems in your church or in your own life. And you know good and well. <laughs> I'm about to say something else. That you want to turn away. You didn't want to give him, her, them another chance. 
You didn't want to love them again. You didn't want to forgive them. But yet, God, what he did for you and what he did for me is an example of how he goes running. <laughs> God, I thank you, God. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Mike, I thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank God. Thank you, God. God, he didn't give up on us. And God's faithfulness and goodness. I mean, I thank God that I'm alive and well. But I wouldn't minimize his goodness or his greatness to me being alive. Oh, God. Same people die every day. Good ones. Old ones, young ones. So I can't minimize his greatness and his goodness because I'm alive. His faithfulness is that the blood of Jesus never gave up on me. His goodness is that the blood of Jesus still holds me. His goodness is that the blood of Jesus still carries me. His goodness holds me. God. That's why I sing of his goodness. That's why I praise him like I do. I don't limit him to being alive because my legacy and my anointing will live on. <laughs> I'm like them Hebrew boys that said even if he doesn't yet it still <laughs> he's still God He's still good. Oh my God. If I don't make it out of a situation, he's still God and he's still good. If you don't heal him, he's still God and he's still good. Oh. It's bigger than this life. That's an eternity that we will live. Oh God. It's bigger than just life. It's bigger than just your pocket being fat. It's bigger than just all the extra stuff that we get, the good things that we see. His goodness and his greatness is because he is still God. Oh my God, my God. Don't get it wrong, I thank God that I'm alive. But Reg, I can't, I can't limit God's greatness to just that. He's bigger than that. Now y'all sit down. Cause I'm on my face. His goodness and his greatness. Oh my God, my God. <laughs> Jesus. God has been faithful.
of God is bigger than that. He's bigger than your problems. He's bigger than your issues. He's bigger than life and death. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. He's a healing God. He's a faithful God. He's great God. He's high and lifted up. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, God. Listen, somebody got to hear this. You put more faith in life than death than you do in God. Look, look, I'm not saying that God don't heal, but I'm saying you got to get out of that place where when God don't do what you think he should do, you think that he's no longer great. You think that he's no longer big. You think that he's no longer faithful. But God is faithful, and he's a just God, and he's a righteous God. As long as we live, and even when we die, God is faithful, and he is high and lifted up. And Jesus sits on the right hand. And the Holy Spirit is here comforting us, guiding us, leading us, helping us. Get out of your own way. <laughs> Get out of your own way and let God do what God is going to do. Allow God to manifest himself in your life. Allow God to come through for you. Allow God to be God. Allow, hey, God. Jesus. Allow him to do it. Allow him to be great. Because when he's great in you, I think the Bible says greater is he that is in me. No, no, greater is he that is in me. See, you don't believe it yet. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Than sickness in the world. <laughs> than evil in the world. Greater is he. No matter what I'm going through, greater is he. <laughs> no matter what my marriage goes through, greater is he. No matter what my money goes through, greater is he. <laughs> no matter what my kids go through, greater is he. <laughs> greater is he that is in me, that is in you, that is in us. Because one can chase a thousand, two. If he's in you, and if he's in me, if he's in all of us, we can change the world. If he's in you, and if he's in me, we can change the community. Greater is he. Jesus. Um, if we do it together, if we do it together, no, no, no. a couple years ago, Apostle was teaching about unity. And Apostle said that, he said that unity is already here. It's our responsibility not to break the unity. But because you don't like the way it looks, 
and you don't like him or her, or you don't like the way they do it, we break unity. I think it's in Amos that says, how can they walk together unless they... There you go. When we do it together, we change the world. But it's hard to change the world. I think, I think Jesus said this. He said, how can Beelzebub be against his own kingdom? Look, 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 look. We, we, we fussing and fighting over the wrong things. We tripping and talking about the wrong things. We are majoring on the minor. All I know, Ace, is greater is he that is in me. If it's really that great, I got to do something about it. We got to do something about it. We got to do something about people dying and, 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 and just being slaughtered. We got to do something about all the poor. We got to do something about the the Bible says the widows. We got to do something about what's going on in the earth. I was talking to him and all he said to me, he said, greater is me that is in you. When are you going to manifest something? He said, I'm not getting up until my time. Jesus said, I'm not getting up until my time. My work is finished. I finished my work. But then I told you to occupy. <laughs> Baby, too many of us are worried about getting to heaven. And God never gave us dominion over heaven. That's his terrain. That's his. That's his. But in Genesis, he said, I gave you dominion over the earth. Yeah, yeah, we reign and rule here, not there. What are you doing about it? What are you saying about it? Or are you just complaining like the rest of them? Minister Wendy said, I have no right. <laughs> I refuse to give the enemy in negativity. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? My God, my God, what? I also don't know where to go. <laughs> I saw something. I was talking to God about something I had seen. I actually went on, I went on Facebook and I saw something. And it wasn't really bad. I saw something. And I saw different people in RCC, just all over the city doing stuff. Apostle Prophet, this is for y'all. And as I seen him, I was like, okay, God, praise God, bless God. And God began to talk to me. He says, do you really want expansion? Are you really serious about it? He said, I spoke a word to the house years ago about expanding. He said, but they can't expand if they don't go. He said, they can't expand what God is doing here if they don't get out. An apostle and prophet, I'm here to tell you, that's an apostolic blast. See, see, I, I know in times being, that's just kind of some words going out. But there's an apostolic blast happening in this house where there's a sending of God's people. It may not be an individual. You go here and you go there. But I'm here to tell you, RCC, that invitations are coming to you. Invites are coming to you. They are calling for you. <laughs> They're calling for you. 
because of the grace that is on your life, because of the anointing that is on your life, because of what you're doing and what you've been receiving, God is calling and sending you. But he's sending you to represent God first. Then he sends you to represent the house of God where you were sent from. Al, I see a sending of God's people in this house. They're calling for you. They're asking for you. And you think you're just there just to be there just to so, show support but God said there's an anointing that you carry and my presence that's on the inside of you wherever you go it will be released in that place wherever the soul of eh. yes. you're not going just to hang out you're not going just to laugh you're going to release the presence of God you're going to release the power of God. You're going to release. <laughs> stay in order. Come on, stay in order though. But he's sending you. This is how we expand. This is how we take territory. You're not even going out as spies this time. You're going out as conquerors. See, spies go out to see what's going on and then they bring it back. That's cool and all that. But when he's sending warriors, when he's sending those guys, they go out to defeat what's in the land. <laughs> Apostolic blast and, and it takes territories. It tear down. It tear down strongholds. There are certain areas and, and, and certain places and, and certain people that you hang with, they have a stronghold on them. But God is sending you. Listen, you ain't even got to lay hands on everybody. But the presence of God that's on the inside of you. Oh, God. It's a breaking up and an interruption of what the enemy is trying to do. Let God have his way with you. Allow God to manifest and use you. I saw it as clear as day, prophet. I saw them. Mother Nancy, I saw you. I, I saw you out. I, I saw Alan Carmen. I, 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 I saw Prophet Vicky and some ladies. I, I saw some people. I saw Gary and Angela. And, and I saw all types. I just started seeing God's people all over the place. And God says, I'm using them. He said, I'm sending you <laughs> into territories. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were some places and some people that you were going to, they were once like you. But because of familiar spirits and seducing spirits, they have turned away. And God says, I'm sending you. Ah. He says, I'm sending you. Your job is not a place just for you to get paid. If God sent you there, he sent you with an anointing. The Bible says, and it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Yoke is bondage. He said, I sent Y'all ain't here. Uh. He said, I sent you there. <laughs> you weren't that skilled. Your resume wasn't that hot. You ain't all that unless you're doing it through God. He said, I place you there to release a fragrance. <laughs> To release my anointing. Stop complaining at work. Stop complaining about your bosses. Stop complaining about them that have rule over you. Stop complaining about your supervisor. Stop complaining about those that are under you. Listen, God saw fit to put people under you. You didn't catch that. 
You talk about being a leader. Leaders lead. So if you put people under you, why are you complaining about the people? Hey, God. Apostle, prophet, this is how we expand. We're going to do it in order. We're going to do it in order. But it got to be done. These four walls ain't big enough for the apostolic anointing that is on these people. It's not big enough for the prophetic that is on these people. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is prophecy itself. But you're trying to, you wait for some big download. All you got to tell them is that Jesus loves you. All you got to tell them is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. But you want to, you want to have something fancy to say. You want to have something fancy and big to say. I'm like, Paul, I don't know nothing except Jesus. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> the title today was Manifest. It's Manifest. And I had asked God, I said, God, are you telling me to tell the people it's time to manifest? He said, no. I said, am I telling the people it's a season of manifestation? He says, no. I said, so what? He said, manifest. I'm like, what do you, what, who, where? He says, manifest. It's a command. And it's not a season because seasons come and go. What this is is on your life. <laughs> What this is, this is a lifestyle manifestation. The thing that God has put in you won't just manifest today. No, there's so much more in you. Manifest means to appear. To break forth. To shine a light on. Y'all know that Jesus was manifested. No, 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 no. He was in heaven or in heavenly places with God. And because of what happened, 1 John says, for this, he was manifested. Mm -mm. He came from the spirit realm into the natural. God wants to take what's in your spirit and push it out here in the natural. Y'all ain't hearing this. See, see, they can't feel your spirit. Yeah, yeah, Holy Spirit can come and the Holy Ghost can come and, and I know it can burn like fire. I know it can give you some goosebumps. I know it can do some things on the inside, but he can't touch you. So God sent Jesus in the flesh. He manifested. And he's looking for you now to manifest what's on the inside. He, he's looking for you to break out of your shell. You got to break out of this right here. He's looking for you to break out of the things that held you down. The, the things that you was afraid of it, and, and the people that you was afraid of it. And I, he said, I need you to manifest like I did. I need you to come forth. My, my, my. I was looking at some scriptures and as I was looking at them Travis they was jacking me up a little bit because I couldn't find nobody to agree with me oh y'all ain't hearing this well, I couldn't find no commentators I couldn't find no, no scholars to agree with me I, I couldn't find nobody I was about five minutes or two seconds from calling you, Apostle. I was about to call Prophet Wood and, and, and some other scholars, but I couldn't find nobody to agree with me. And God says, be still. He says, what I'm sharing with you 
everybody won't see it yet. Because the scriptures I was looking at, it made it appear that what God was saying was when Jesus come, we will see him because he will be manifested to us. But God says, I'm not talking about when Jesus come back the second time. I'm telling you to manifest what, who Jesus is now. Re-education. Take your seat. So let, 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 me, let me explain this to y'all right quick. I just want to explain this. Y'all going to catch this in the spirit? Because I just told you, you ain't going to find a lot out there. He's going to have to reveal it to you what I'm saying right now. So those that have an ear, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. God, we are your people. You are our God. You inspired, you inspired every word in scripture. Only you can reveal. So God, reveal to us what it is you're saying today. He wants to elevate your mind. And it's going to jack your theology just a little bit. The word manifest talks about an external display that is so evident that everybody can see it. It doesn't require no deep revelation. It don't require none of that. It, but it's so evident that when what sin you comes out of you, they will know that this must be God. It will come forth out of you and everybody will begin to say, hold on, is that not Ray Ray? Is that not Lil Pookie? Is that not? And it ain't what they are actually it, they, they might not be doing the best of things, but they have changed. Gary, God is doing something in your life, man of God. You are a good man. You are a good man. And God's hand is on you. You tiptoeing, but God's hand is on you. And there's nothing, because cause, cause it's almost like Thomas. I love the way Apostle teaches that. Thomas had a reason to, to look at them disciples and like, these jokers crazy. Because he heard and yeah, I remember he was hanging with them 24-7. So he knew some of the things they have said. So sometimes you can't get, you can't get mad at people because they don't want to be around you. Maybe they, they was with you when you said what you said. And they saw the, they saw the lack of faith that was in you. They saw, okay, I ain't going to go there. So they tiptoe around you, not because of the anointing. They tiptoe because they remember what you said. But anyway, so Thomas said, not until I touch. He's going to touch you. <laughs> He's going to touch you. He's going to touch you because you're a good man. Ah. And when he touches you, <laughs> oh my God, many gonna come. But let me get back to this. I got long. I already preach. I want to I want to explain this to you. I need you to hear. In the book of First John three. Verse 5 says that you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Then verse 8 says he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Contrary to popular belief Jesus didn't 
not only come to die on the cross. He didn't come to just die on the cross. The Bible tells you he came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came to take away our sins. The cross was the culmination of taking away the sin and doing something for us that we may live sinless. <laughs> Boy, this is... If you go up to verse 2 in that same chapter, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God and doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is not only a scripture referring to the rapture. This is not a scripture that's talking about life when you after death, life after you die in heaven. This is not saying when he comes and cracked the sky. Because he came that we may have life, right? That we may have what? More abundantly. He came that we may have life and more abundantly. So if you're only focusing on the afterlife, there's no need for life. His manifestation was to take away the sins. So really, you and I don't have sin problems. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He that sinneth is of the devil. And we are not of the devil. So contrastly, that means that if we are of God, yeah, remember they said he has no sin in him. So if he lives in you, there is no sin in you. Oh my God, oh my. <laughs> the water is getting trouble. You said, but come on, Pastor, I know a whole lot of, I, I was sitting beside somebody that sinned yesterday. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Maybe not in here, I'm playing, don't, don't, don't. So this can't be true what you're saying, sir. Hear what I'm saying. When he manifests in you, because there's no sin in him, there's no sin in you. But what you have to allow to happen is for him to come forth out of you. So when you operate, or better yet, when you allow him to work through you, Guess what? You will work without sin. But when you get involved, because in this flesh there's no good. But also no flesh shall glory in his. Right? Right, right? But remember, but he is in you. Y'all remember all that earlier? Greater is he that is in me. What I'm saying is what God was saying to me says, stop operating in you and start operating through me. Because when I manifest through you, I take away the sins of the world. So that's why he told the disciples, whoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Oh, yeah, God. He was told to his people, those that believe. You have to understand, we're not becoming like Christ. Jesus manifested, he did not become the son of God. No, no, he didn't show up and grow into sonship. Oh, y'all got to catch this. So, therefore, when we talk about growing in the spirit, your spirit is not growing. Oh, boy, this is going, okay, 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 okay. Listen, listen to me. Remember, he is all that you need. He has no sin. 
He's fully grown, and when he's in you, your spirit man doesn't grow up. What happens is your soul tries to catch up with your spirit man. So you're not growing in the spirit. How do you tell a big God to grow up? He's already big in you. He lives in you, and all you're doing is catching up with him. I mean, don't get me wrong. The word play is good because it breaks it down for you. But in reality, he's a full-grown man in you. Oh, man, okay. Well, I'll try that in another year or two because uh, you, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. But that's okay. They were singing a song and talking about spring over where we come alive, Right? In John 14, 19 through 21, in the Message Bible, there's a, I like the word in there, it says, when he manifests, it says, he will, you will come alive. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Think about this, y'all. Every born again believer, <laughs> this is good stuff for me. Every born again believer has everything they need to accomplish what God has sent them to do. You just got to work through your mind. Because your heart, remember, the spirit man is good. You're working through your mind to convince your mind to follow the spirit. Because they are at war with each other. You know, good and well, God will tell you to do something, you sitting there like, I don't know if I can do this. You for, we forget all about greater is he. It's good for preaching notes. But when the rubber meets the road. <laughs> Portland like, uh-huh, she's she shaking, she's uh-huh. Listen. He wants to manifest through you. Oh. One more point. When Christ manifests, when he appears, I'm telling you, he just busts up. It bursts through you. I love that bursting out. Bur bursts through you. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Come on, y'all know it in every, at the name of Jesus. But I want to say something to you. When Jesus appears on the scene, everything changes. The enemy flees. Sickness goes. People come alive. People can see. People are healed. So at the name of Jesus, it may bow. It may submit. It may even acknowledge that he is Lord. But when he appears on the scene through you, everything changes. Hey, look, look. Y'all remember when Jesus showed up and it said that them spirits like, Jesus, what, what, what are you doing here? I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Talking about how you Afrocentric people talk. Yo, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Nah, man, it ain't, it ain't time yet. What'd you come to mess with us for? It ain't time for you to be messing with us. They knew who Jesus was. They confessed who he was. They knew his power by his name. But when he knows you, when you appear, when he appears through you, they have to go. They don't just sit there and submit. They have to go. Then get it. They don't just sit there and submit. They have to go. Look, look, they don't just sit there and submit and be quiet. No, they must go because when you go, it's still there. But what we are called to do in the manifestation of the things of God is to kick it out of here so that when I leave that place, it is no longer there. No, okay, go ahead. It's like your children. Do this, do this, do this. As long as you're there and you're looking over your shoulder, you, they, they doing what you tell them to do. But when you leave the house, 
when you, the Bible says a child left to his, I ain't going to go there. That's a whole different story. But, but when you leave them alone, they, they prop on the couch and they turn the TV on. They ain't doing nothing you told them to do because you're there. But I'm here to tell you when Christ manifests through your life, every spirit of torment, every spirit of depression, every spirit that tried to come in, it don't just sit there dormant. It don't just sleep. It don't just wait for another opportune time. That spirit must go. We are called to manifest Christ like that. That means that when I go a place and when I allow him to appear, every spirit that is not of God has to go. Every spirit that does not line up with what God is doing has to go. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to get the demons flee when he shows up. Demons are cast out when he shows up. Sickness is healed when he shows up. Freedom, oh Jesus! Freedom is there when He shows up. Oh. this don't happen only when He comes back. This is supposed to be happening now. But you wait for Him to appear in the sky before you start manifesting. And God said, "That's not the time." I'm going to call you then to war with me in the heavenlies. I need you to manifest on the earth realm so you can have dominion. When you manifest on the earth realm. <laughs> oh, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Come on, stand all over the building. And you got to carry the sin. It's not your problem. It's allowing him to manifest. Because the Bible says, he says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, you know the rest. And every tongue that rises up against me. Come on, y'all, come on. Philippians 4, 13 says, but I can do through who? Come on, Psalms 23 says, the Lord is my and I shall not you know why? Because I got everything I need. <laughs> I'm full of God. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I'm full of the full stature of Christ. Y'all ain't catching that. Because you think that he's just a baby. You think that, that you only got a little bit. You think that you got to keep growing. But I'm telling you, your spirit man is full. Your spirit man is full. <laughs> Come on. The Bible says, Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that what? That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight and in his law, day and night, <laughs> then shall. Come on. Like a tree planted by the and his leaf shall not because you got everything you need. You're full in the God of your strength. You're full in Jehovah God. You can manifest on this earth. You can manifest. Oh, my, my. Time to manifest in your life. Oh, I'm feeling this manifest, y'all. We it's time for us to come forward. Come on, y'all know God designed you. He created you to be a force to be reckoned with on this earth realm. Apostle can't do it all by himself. Prophet can't do it all by herself. Jakes can't do it all by himself. They can't do it all, but God didn't call them to everybody. He called them to somebody. And then each somebody is called to somebody else. You have in you what a reach of people I can't reach. But if I'm connected to you, if we are unified, 
and we understand that God wants you to manifest, I will help you. I will support you. I will encourage you. I will dance with you. I will praise with you. I will war with you. I will fight with you. Apostle, because I believe what God showed me about this house, about the people in this house, I'm telling you, as you manifest, God is sending you. Again, don't, don't, go, don't go out of order, though. Don't go without being covered. Don't don't just receive stuff. Do it in order. But I'm telling you, if you allow God and say, God, I, look, I'm here to manifest what you called me to do. The doors are about to open. People are about to start calling you, inviting you. You're like, I don't even like them. Why they invite me to their party? I don't even, no, 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 hear me. I don't even associate with them. We ain't cool like that. But they're going to invite you because it's what you bring. It's what you have. But because I believe that, everybody just come to the altar. Everybody, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Apostle Prophet, can you come up here, please? Baby, could you come here? Thank you, sir. Equipping leaders. Loving people, equipping leaders. Sending. I said everybody, and I forgot we got guests here. Thank y'all for coming, though. I appreciate it. There's a, a apostolic grace. You're not apostles. Not all of you. Not, you know, don't get it twisted. You're not apostles. You, again, whatever God has called you to call you, cool. That's not what you're up here for right now. There's an apostolic grace and anointing. An apostolic and prophetic anointing on this house. It's on each, each and every one of you. If you are connected, now if you ain't connected, there's some other stuff on you, but not the grace and anointing that is on this house. Hey, that's just the that just truth. But the anointing and the power. I like that. We're going. But you got to go in love. It's, I'm not going to say it's no good, but it can be better. If you go and you operate in the gifts of the Spirit, that's great. But if you don't operate the gifts of the, with the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, Peace, joy, long suffering, patience. If you don't have to go with that love, look, look, you got the love doctor. Well, not the love doctor, but <laughs> you wrote the book on it. If you don't go in love, your gifts, your gifts are your talent. Look, everybody got a talent. Everybody got a talent. Everybody got a gift. But when that gift is not utilized in love, woo, when, when, that, when that gift doesn't go and show long suffering and patience with God's people, it, 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 it puts a sourness on it. Then they walk away wondering, was you, are they really saved because they was dealing with your crazy self? So as God opens doors for you, you go in order, 
and you go in love. How many of y'all willing to go in order and go in love? As the apostle and prophet have heard from God in this house what God has called them to do. As Pastor Danette and I have heard what God said I'm letting you know the doors are opening. This is not the type scripture. This is not windows. Not windows that are opening to you. The doors, Roger. The doors are opening, Roger. <laughs> the doors are opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. The doors are opening. The doors are opening. Never. The doors are opening. The doors are opening. Specifically, you two. Al Carmen, the doors are opening. Every event is to bring not just your cuisine. That's not what it's about. That's that's a good open, that's a good um segue, but that's not what God is doing. But you got to be careful because some of those that you that he called you to, they was once there and they walked away. You go in love, you go in power, and you go in integrity. And watch what God begin to do. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we receive your word today. As we have lifted hands, hands of surrendering, hands of, us, of acceptance of what you have called us to manifest. God, send us in your love. Send us in your power. Send us in your grace. And God, we will do, God, what you have put in us to do. Every gift shall come forth. Every gift shall come forth. Every gift shall come forth. Every gift. It will not be delayed. It will definitely not be denied. It shall come forth. And we shall manifest. We shall, ah, oh God, here, hey, let the light shine. So that men will see your light and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That it is command, and if you receive it, just someone say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Come on, come on, give God a praise. 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 Apostle Prophet, I see expansion all around. I see expansion all around. I see expansion all around. You declared, y'all declared some years ago when we was talking about harvest, and you said it's 10 years of harvest. Yeah. But according to the scripture, it says when he looked out, he didn't see the laborers. Because the harvest was too great for those that we had or that he had at the time. I see harvest, but I see laborers coming. And I see them being sent. I see them being sent. I see them being sent. And I see God manifesting and expanding what he covered. Man. 
I don't know if it's an accurate way to say it, that it's bigger than you think, but it's bigger than you think. And it's not necessarily thought of. Not that the vision has changed of what God showed you. The end results is the end results. But the stuff in between don't look like it. And God says, it's expansion all around you. It's expansion all around you. It's expansion all around you. Touching different parts, not just this city. All around. And we are the first partakers. Look, if you ain't with it, you ain't with it. I'm cool with it. I'm letting you know I ain't that dude. But I'm telling you, if you receive what I'm saying today, God is about to do some amazing things in your life. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing, Stacy. Amazing. Amazing, Brittany. Don't give up on God. Because he never gave up on you. And he won't give up on you. He's got so much more in store for you. God never shortchanged you. God will only give you the best. Apostle, Apostle Prophet, before you, you, you told me to pray, do I say out loud what's going on or I just pray? I need you, a couple of weeks ago I prayed, and it was funny, Apostle, I was praying for somebody, they shared something, and I brought the people around, I said, all right, y'all, we're going to pray. And I began to pray, and someone was looking like, I said, don't worry about what I'm praying about, you just join me in the spirit. Because the spirit knows all. Yep. For a second, that song was like, it's so crazy. Because yeah. I wouldn't tell them. If we believe <laughs> that there's one Lord, yeah. and we believe there's one spirit, you ain't got to know everything. You just got to know how to pray. And even when you don't know everything, all you got to do is agree with the ones that know. So, join me in agreement. Father, today, God, God, we lift up our brother and our sister. God, you see what's going on, God, but God, we know you to be a great God. God, we know you to be a healer. God, we know you to love your people, oh God. And God, we know and believe that it's your desire that we should be in good health, oh God. God, it's your desire, God. That we don't just prosper, but we shall prosper and be in good health, God. God, we know that you know all things about us, oh God. For you are our creator, you are our God. You know every muscle, you, every, you know every tissue, you know every bone, you know every organ. You know what's going on, God. And God, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the stripes on his back, because of the way he walked and manifested healing, oh God. God, we speak healing, God. God, we speak healing, God. God, we speak your power. Mm. But God, even like the centurion, God, though we're not there in the natural, he says, send your word. And God, we send your word of healing. God, we send your word of comfort. God, we send your word of peace, oh God. God, we speak to every doctor and every nurse and everybody that will come into that place that only the wisdom of God will begin to speak. God, we declare that only holy, sanctif sanctified hands shall touch, oh God. God, we declare God healing and we bind the report, the evil report we don't receive the evil report. We hear the information and we prepare a plan of attack to execute.
the judgment of God against anything that doesn't line up with your word. So we speak to the organs. We speak to every part of the body. And we command you to operate as God has told you, as God has created you. Operate. Function. Do what God created you to do. We declare these things to be so. In the name of Jesus and by the blood, it is so. Come on, give God praise. It is so. It is so. It is so. Apostle Prophet, you have anything before we for release? Amen. Amen. Kenya, you stood out in the spirit, baby. And the Lord just wants you to know that what you've gone through, many would not have made it. But because the word of God, the power of God, the peace of God is on the inside of you, you're still standing today. But not only are you standing, come up here, Kenya, you're standing as a representative. See, the enemy would have you to dwell on the hurt, the pain, the anger, the resentment, the frustration. But what Pastor Ray is teaching on today manifests. You've manifest. Now hear me well. For you to go into a community organization and to sit in a seat of authority and to open up the door for me and an apostle to come in and be able to minister to hurt women, you've manifest because you've hurt in the past. That qualifies you. But you don't leave them wounded because God didn't leave you wounded. He brought healing to you and he's using you to bring healing to them. You gotta see what we see. That's why he said go in order. You went in order and now you're representing God but you representing all of us. Don't dwell on the past. Celebrate your future. You're in the right place at the right time for God to do a right now new thing in you. You hear me? You are a daughter who represents God and represents us very well. So you keep your shoulders back and you keep your head up and you look to the hills from which come of your help. Because all of the help that brought you through what you went through, babe, I've been there. I done contemplated some stuff. And I know what it takes to warfare to be able to still come back in the midst of people who saw you hurting and didn't hug you or love you. Didn't even see you. God said that's because he only wanted you to see him, baby. And you did. So you still standing to do more. Receive that in the spirit. Amen. We see you. We celebrate you. And we thank you. I thank you for going back into that place and opening a door for me to bring healing and deliverance to those hurt women. We love you with the love of God. I love you with the love of God. Amen. That's all I got to say, Pastor Ray. You have to go after that one. Didn't you say that, Pastor Ray? I said it. You got to go after that one. We, we never go past the word of God. That has been taught. We echo an agreement.
Holy Spirit has put on Pastor Ray's heart that it's time to manifest. Pastor Ray, even as they sing about the river, the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 47 says, the man took him out into the waters 1,750 feet and it measured ankle deep. And then he took him another 1,750 feet and it went to his knees. And another 1,750 feet and it went to his waist. And another 1,750 feet and it was so deep that now he could not walk in it or stand but he had to swim. It's time for you to hit your swimming anointing. Oh, he says, as he began to reach the depths of his swimming anointing, he says, things that were dead began to come alive. And we, we speak what Pastor Ray said. Things are beginning to manifest in the dead places in your life. In that same scripture, Pastor Ray, around verse 10, he says, the dead sea will be filled with many living fish of all kind, and they will swim in the dead sea, and it has no life in it right now, but he says, it's going to change because of the flowing of the anointing. The manifestation of the anointing in your life flowing out of the temple, according to 47, and going out in the streams began to produce trees, and the trees began to produce leaves, and healing was manifested. Every month, new leaves grew, and healing was being manifest in the nation. You're going to understand healing is walking with you. Yeah. Healing is manifesting itself in you. When you walk out of this room, the anointing is flowing out of the temple and is going now wherever Holy Spirit carries it. And when you obey him and go, people will be changed and come back to life. It will be new life in the destiny of the people that you make contact with. But you got to do something that Pastor Ray said. you got to stop looking at them in their low place. But you got to stop looking at yourself in your low place. A sin conscience will tell you you're not qualified to minister to anybody else. But he told us today that we're cleansed and we're clean by the blood of Jesus. Inside every last one of you, lift your hands. Paul says it this way. There is a treasure inside these earthen vessels that God is ready to manifest. Because we are the evidence of his glory and the evidence of his resurrection and the evidence of his power. That word manifest means to be evidence of. We are the evidence that Jesus is still virtuous and ruling. Pastor Ray is anointing you. That anointing doesn't stay in this room. It flows out of this room with you. Mother Jackie, it's time to manifest. Elder Jackie, it's time to manifest. Elder Jackie Rowe, it's time to manifest. Elder Jackie Rowe is not around you, but he's in you. And in your hands, there is healing. And in your hands, there is strength. And in your hands, there is an anointing to lift up and draw people out of their heavy places. In your hands, there is an anointing to release praise on top of burdens. In your hands, there's an anointing to give God glory. But in your mouth, there is a word of deliverance. The enemy has tried to lock your jaws. 
He has tried to lock your mouth to bring a spirit of heaviness over your life. But this day, under the apostolic anointing given unto us with the power and the authority, woman of God, thou art loose. It's her season. It's her season. That expansion is evidence. Pastor Ray still laying hands. He's still anointing. Amen. That anointing is evidence. All you got to do is agree with God. He's not a respecter of persons. Minister Carmen Myers, did not Pastor Ray say to you the same thing I said to you a couple of weeks ago? That food is an introduction. And you like to serve it privately. But God is opening up a public kitchen in you. And people that you don't know are coming to eat. But it's not just natural food. The minister will manifest. And the minister will release the glory of God. Jesus used food to relax people so that he could put something greater in them. And he's given you the same gift. Manifest. Shakita Massey, it's time to manifest. God has given you a platform that's higher than you're looking at. I call you from downtown Newport News. Apostle, I don't live downtown. I live in Denby. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about your physical residence. God has equipped you and anointed you with an authority. And he's, he's placing and positioning and walking you through doors. <laughs> And he's not going to stop. He's going to keep walking you. Who is the highest judge in the city of Newport News? Circuit Court Judge? I'm not talking about today, but I'm talking about today. Their season is coming to an expiration. And God is going to bring you through the back door and raise you up to put you in a seat. And you're going to legislate law over this city. And you're going to sit in the high court. And you're going to be an appellate. And you're going to make declarations and they're going to be righteous decrees for the city and the people of this city. And you're going to bring vengeance to the wrong that has been released. And God says, I'm going to use you because I put this on you and you shall be a judge. You shall be a righteous judge in the city of Newport News. We better stop. Hey. I'm, I'm just going to put it to you like this. Y'all know me. I, I, don't, I don't think God is finished. I don't think God is finished. But I'm going to respect your personal time. However, if you know God still is working on you, you can just stay at this altar. We're gonna, we can worship. You can leave. You can go eat. and do whatever you need to do. But I need to, this young man right here behind you, Mother Grimes, yeah, you. Yeah, you. Father, we declare your peace over your people. 
We declare your grace over your people. God, we declare that as they leave this place, God, that your spirit will go with them because you are in them. But God, as they go out from these, from these grounds, oh God, God, we declare that your power will manifest. God, we declare, God, that everything that's been spoken today, it shall be. May God bless you and may God keep you and may his face shine upon you. We love you, Internet Church. God bless you. God bless you. Bring it in.